The discovery of a disassembled battle robot buried around the globe nearly 6,000 years ago leads to troubling questions about humanity's past and puts the world in a precarious state of military brinksmanship in Sleeping Giants. That's the book I am reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. Hello everybody, Thomas here. Once again, thank you all so much for joining me. Now, even by the standards of popcorn reading, Sleeping Giants really could have stood a lot taller than it actually does. Now you'd think there would be very little you could do wrong working from the premise of the discovery of a 20-story tall alien battle robot buried deep underground. And it's not as if Sylvain Nouvelle, in his debut novel, which this is, does anything wrong especially. It's that he just doesn't go far enough with the idea. Sleeping Giants reads a lot less like a satisfying novel in its own right than a warm-up exercise for its inevitable sequel. It all begins when 11-year-old Rose Franklin takes her brand new birthday bicycle out for a spin and promptly falls into a massive sinkhole. But this is no ordinary sinkhole. It's a clearly artificial, buried chamber lined with metallic panels covered in glowing cryptic symbols. And Rose has fallen into the palm of a 6,000-year-old metal hand. Flash forward many years, now the artifact whose mere existence essentially rewrites everything humanity has thought it understood about its own origins and about its own history, has been under study by the US military and such shadowy agencies as the NSA. Rose now has a PhD from the University of Chicago and is working as a senior scientist on the team studying the hand and the symbol covered panels. Now when a second piece of the statue's body, because now it is very clear that the hand is just part of a greater whole, is uncovered accidentally in Turkey during a military reconnaissance mission. The mission's pilots, warrant officers Kara Resnick and Ryan Mitchell, are brought into the team as well. In short order, they learn what they need to do to recover the remaining missing parts of the statue and quickly discover it is no statue, but an automaton. A robot around 200 feet tall and clearly designed for battle, controlled by a, a, a couple of pilots working uh, from a chamber within the robot's torso and it's been buried for 6,000 years. Now, I'm not saying it was aliens, but... Now, what Sylvain Nouvelle does very well, and, and the part of the story that I like the best, had to do with the political ramifications of such a monumental discovery. Now, what might happen to global stability if only one nation has in its possession an invincible doomsday bot? Naturally, the US is unable to keep the robot's existence a secret for very long, and in no time, a tense situation of military brinksmanship soon arises. Now, all of this has massive escapist appeal, and Nouvelle keeps the story ticking along at a very brisk pace that makes its already economical 300 pages just fly by. And yet the story never quite hits its marks as squarely as it should. And I put this down to Nouvelle's choices involving his narrative execution. Now, with a few exceptions, the entire novel is told in the form of interview transcripts by the same interviewer, this kind of nameless government mystery man about whom we learn pretty much nothing at all, other than that he seems to possess the ability to command all the resources of the federal government and the military at the snap of a finger. He effectively becomes the book's viewpoint character, its active protagonist, because we see everything unfolding from his perspective. And while that's an interesting stylistic conceit, it really doesn't do much for the book in the way of character development, because whoever the hell he is doesn't have anything like a conventional arc. Moreover, the further you get into the book, the more he seems less and less like an actual believable person and more like, I don't know, a James Bond villain or a Marvel character. I mean, you know, he does things like he never uses contractions when he talks, right? Everything is will not, must not, am not, cannot, do not. It is. It, that sort of thing. Nobody talks like that. I mean, I kept expecting the guy to say Hail Hydra at some point. It would not have been out of place. Now, Nouvelle does take a stab at developing the rest of the cast, but he relies a little bit too heavily on cliches like the love triangle in order to ratchet up interpersonal tensions. The book also lacks any kick-ass defining action set piece. Now, I know there's probably no rule out there, hard and fast rules saying that every story about a 200 foot tall giant alien killer robot has to have the thing out there stomping cities flat or fighting kaiju or whatever, but you know, I think that's the sort of thing that audiences who read stories about giant alien killer robots want to see. And if you're not going to have your giant alien killer robot out there doing giant alien killer robot things, 
then what is in its place needs to be at least as exciting. And while Nouvelle sets up a couple of potentially interesting action sequences, particularly one set in the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea, he never really fully commits, and so we are left to hope for the expected giant killer robot carnage in Sleeping Giants 2, whatever it's going to end up being called. Now, if you have been looking forward to this book, I'm not going to tell you not to read it. I mean, Sylvain Neuville seems like a reasonably talented guy, cutting his teeth. But I would advise you not to go into the thing with giant expectations. And that is all I have time for on this episode of SFF 180, everybody. As always, thank you so much for joining me. It is thunderstorming outside right now, which is a great time to be shooting a video like this. Remember the most important thing, these are reviews you are not always going to agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with everyone, and above all, please subscribe. That is how SFF180 grows as a channel. And until I see all of you next time, happy reading.